Bitcoin uh, rising on Fed Chair Powell's uh, comment to the Senate Banking Committee yesterday outlining risks of keeping uh, rates higher uh, for longer. Joining us now, Anthony Pompliano, professional uh, capital management CEO. It's kind of doing what you have always said is possible at, at any time, and that those are large moves up, up and down. Yeah. I think we're getting down into the 40s, or this is it already? No, I, I mean, look, prices go down because there's more sellers than buyers, obviously. Um, and so the question is, who's selling? And there's really two main culprits at the moment. Uh, the German government has about 50,000 Bitcoin that they seized from a pirating website, uh, and they've been trying to offload it. Uh, what's interesting about it, if you look at the on-chain data, is they're basically going to as many exchanges as they can and trying to sell. Um, and so they're about halfway through that right now. It's about $2.5 billion. Uh, they've sold about a, a billion and a half or so. Um, and then there's also the Mt. Gox Bitcoin that's been distributed. And so I think people more so are scared, hey, if there's billions of dollars being distributed back, are these people who have been illiquid for years just going to sell it? What's really interesting about this is Bitcoin is still very illiquid. And so there's most of the Bitcoin that is out there being held by people that have a long-term view. And so when a seller shows up with just a couple billion of dollars, the price will go down. Now, if I told you someone's going to come sell billions of dollars and the price was only going to go down to $55,000 or so, that's actually pretty bullish, right? I, I think that people are looking at this and saying, hey, look, Bitcoin is still pretty healthy. How illiquid do you think the market is? I mean, we, we always talk about the, the whales who have the wallets yeah. that have been sitting there forever since the inception of Bitcoin. But how, do you, how big do you think it is at this point? At, at the start of this year, uh, the amount of Bitcoin that had not moved in over a year was over 70%. Um, 70%. And, so very high. Now, uh -huh. as the price has risen, some of that has started to get distributed, which is what you would expect in a bull market. And so really the question right now is basically, you know, how strong are those hands and will they outlast the German government? Will they outlast these, you know, Mt. Gox uh, distributions. And so my expectation is as we get further into the bull market, that number will come back down towards 50, 55 percent. But still, at least half of the Bitcoin probably is being held by people who have a 10 plus year time horizon. Didn't it go up because ETFs had to, to buy, buy the, yeah, and, and buy the, the incremental amount that was of it, the same thing that you're talking about now? There wasn't enough to buy to go into the ETF. So then it just flips right around when there is more and but the ETFs are already satiated. Yeah, I think that there's a huge uh, part of like Bitcoin is a free market asset. And so naturally, when an ETF gets approved, there's a bunch of people who are very excited. The media is talking about it. People can, rush in. But you needed it. to buy Bitcoin to go into the ETFs, right? And there weren't that many for sale. C correct. And so about 80 percent of those flows now, after people have analyzed it, appear to be retail, not actual institutions going in yet. And so I've talked to a lot of folks who run RIAs or, or large institutions, and it takes a while for them to go through their investment process, underwrite the risks, approve and then allocate. And so my expectation is kind of the second half of this year, maybe, you know, end of Q3, beginning of Q4, we'll start to see a lot more of the institutional flows uh, into those ETFs. Um, and also the basis trade. There was a lot of people who were going long Bitcoin, short the futures. Uh, and as that spread has come down, less and less people are saying, hey, I should go put that trade on. And so it's just a very dynamic market with a lot of inputs and you know, trying to stay on top of it. Uh, I still think Bitcoin's got a very good future ahead of it. So you got Congress, they, they're trying to do things, right, for clarity. And you've got a Biden-Trump election, uh, theoretically, I don't know, uh, at this point. Um, how does that factor into the, the regulatory environment for yeah. Bitcoin right now? Is it, is it positive or negative? Donald Trump has positioned himself as a pro-Bitcoin, pro-crypto candidate. Is he really? And look, you know, I actually think that uh, if you watch his public comments, he has followed pretty much the exact thought process and journey that most Bitcoiners follow. At first yeah. you hear about it, you're like, there's no way this could be real. This is a scam. There's probably criminals using this, et cetera. Then you get interested. Then it's all about price. And then eventually you get convinced of sound money principles and kind of the, the other ethos around it. Now, what I do see is Democrats are kind of caught in between two things, right? Because on one hand, you don't want to cede the crypto and Bitcoin point to the Republicans. Uh, but also you have a number of people in the Democratic faction that are saying, look, we don't like like this stuff. We actually want to clamp down on it. And so what you're getting is a bifurcation from what I can see where uh, there's some breaking of, you know, the party lines. And uh, ultimately, I think that people for decades have been voting for their wallet. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin and crypto is just the latest version of that. And so when they go into that ballot box in November, they're going to look for a pro crypto or pro Bitcoin uh, candidate, whether it's at the presidential level uh, or state, um, you know, Senate, Congress, etc. Will that be enough to be a catalyst for Bitcoin if Donald Trump were elected? A lot of Bitcoiners probably won't like this answer, but I actually think the only thing we need as a catalyst for Bitcoin is time. Uh, one of these interesting things about if you go and look through all these different cycles, the summer's just slow. People are doing stuff. People are traveling. You know, they're not sitting in front of their computer watching a chart. And so uh, when we get into September and beyond, I think that's just enough to get the uh, price to go back up. There, we're still with just the store value, though. That's enough for you right now. We're still not sending it to relatives over in 
Ukraine or yeah. something. Uh, again, maybe not a popular answer, but uh, Bitcoin definitely has won the store of value, you know, in the crypto asset class. Uh, but stable coins are winning the medium of exchange. And I think that um, if you look at the data, stable coins now do just as much volume as Visa. And ultimately, people want an asset that if they go and they spend it or they send it to a friend, it's not going to be worth two, three, four X more in the future. Right. And so dollars, they believe, are going to actually be worth less in the future. And so it makes sense that they want to spend the dollars on a blockchain okay. uh, and then hold Bitcoin in the store. You don't want to buy that pizza instead of a Bugatti, right? It's better to use dollars and hold your Bitcoin than it is to uh, do the opposite.